In the centre of Sao Paulo, a strange scene is underway, involving a shopping trolley speaker, rap music, a few dance moves and two clowns. Once a week, this group goes to this lower-class neighbourhood, the most dangerous place in the Brazilian metropolis. Where are we going now? To Cracolandia. What the psychiatrist dressed as clown calls Cracolandia is literally the land of crack cocaine, an open-air zone where drug users gather, the largest in Brazil, surrounded by police. We're going in, so put your camera down. To successfully get into Cracolandia, our camera has to be hidden because of drug trafficking. Between 1,000 and 1,500 people live here, without shelter, without water and without sanitation. 40% of them have been here for more than 10 years. Every Thursday, Flavio Falcone and his collective organize a talent contest, a breath of fresh air for these addicts. Our goal with these users here is not for them to stop using overnight. We're trying to occupy most of their time so that they reduce the amount of crack they use each day. That day, the show was interrupted by rain, but also by the municipal police, who'd received orders to evacuate the area. <laughs> Residents have fled the neighborhood. Only members of the project are allowed to pass through the barriers surrounding Cracolandia. Drug users will be moved to another street so that the city council can clean up the area. They call it the war on drugs, but the war's never been against drugs. The war has always been against these people who are poor and black, that's the truth. Cracolandia has existed for 30 years. No politician, whether from the left or right, has managed to solve the problem. Sao Paulo City Council has invested heavily in a police response, from regularly moving shelters to crackdowns on drug trafficking. Since January, three people have been killed by the police. According to the authorities, officers reacted to attempted robberies. Crime rates in this neighborhood are the highest in the city. Last year, more than 48,000 thefts were recorded there. Look at the Toulette sign, yet another closed shop. Unemployed people. 20 years ago, this would have been impossible. Santa Virginia used to be the most desirable street for traders who paid a fortune to be here. Today, it's completely run down. Josimar Andragi is one of the leaders of the Sao Paulo Traders Union. He comes to visit a shopkeeper whose store was ransacked a few days ago. When I arrived in the morning, it was like this. They ripped up the whole door, see? Shortly before 6 a.m., several hundred people invaded and robbed the store within minutes. The manager estimates the damage to be more than 56,000 euros. We don't just want police presence during the day. We also want them here at night and early morning. If the police were present at these times, when Cracolandia gathers here, that would solve the problem. Sao Paulo's state governor has since announced plans for an extra 2,000 officers to patrol the streets in the center. Lack of security means property prices in the neighborhood have dropped by 27 percent. With local elections later this year, Cracolandia is a political priority. Convinced that the only solution is in turning drug addicts by force, this right-wing politician has decided to open a public inquiry into the NGOs which distribute food here. The aim of this inquiry is to see how these NGOs work, how many people they serve and have managed to get off the streets and offer treatment to, and also if they're embezzling public money to fund electoral campaigns and the politicians involved in these NGOs. In his crosshairs is a priest close to left-wing parties. Giulio Lancelotti has been fighting for the poor in Sao Paulo and an active figure helping homeless people for more than 40 years. Does anyone want bread here? Several miles from Cracolandia, Father Giulio distributes breakfast to an ever-growing homeless population every morning. With an estimated 55,000 homeless people in Sao Paulo, that's a quarter of the country's entire homeless population.
My God, I think you've lost a lot of weight. This is fascist reasoning. Now those who criticise can stop eating too, to see if they disappear. In Crackerlandia, you seem to see a lot of people with nice cars looking for crack. Near Crackerlandia, we find Flavio Falcone, who swapped his clown costume for his psychiatrist's hat. The antidepressant will reduce the intensity of your discomfort. Andrea has been an addict for almost 40 years. Flavio Falcone's project now offers her an income for her help in organizing the shows. The same is true for Anna Maria, nicknamed the Little Witch. I used to live on the streets, and they were the ones who got me off the streets because I was taking part in the project. This is the gateway we offer people. For two months, she was on the talent contest's judging panel until I managed to find her a room. The project, funded entirely by a private initiative, offers 25 rooms free of charge. It's a radical change for Anna Maria, who's lived here for six months, after 28 years in Crackerlandia. I used to buy four grams of crack for 20 euros, and now I only spend two euros, because I spend my money on other things. On the street, I couldn't get a phone, kitchen utensils, or even food to cook. In 12 years, Flavio has managed to help around 100 people like her. It's a drop in the ocean, but proof that getting out of Crackerlandia is possible, little by little.